The following program is sponsored by Capitech. Hello and a very warm welcome to the Insider SA, your guide to living better. Join us today as we open up to novelty with designer Laduma Ngokolo making his autumn winter collection as sustainable as it is irresistible. Health and fitness educator Angelique Dauberman's breakthrough when trying to control her weight was ditching dieting to focus on healthy eating. Rugby player Bram Stein wins over his girlfriend Lucretia Noldi's Italian family with Breibruikis. Instagram falls for Ruben Lamprecht, a cattle farmer with a biggest heart for animals. And digital creators Jody and Justine Peterson find the most novel way to finance new wheels. La Duman Ocolo Matosa's brand made its name by expressing authentic Cosa style and culture on the world stage. The designer is now using his global platform to promote an entirely novel collection dedicated to sustainability. And we were invited to watch it take shape. This is what we call the lab, where we design, conceptualize, and play around with ideas. Some prototype ideas don't even make it to the show, but we try by all means to make our design cutting edge. Fabric making is a very complicated process which involves a lot of engineering. Sometimes we even get results that we didn't even anticipate. We've got technicians that literally stand in front of the machine to make sure that the fabric doesn't even break or get damaged into the process. With demand booming abroad, Laduma's commitment to quality is clearly paying off. What you basically see here behind us is the cutting part. This is where we start making sure that we cut every garment to perfection right after we create the fabric. Cutting is a sensitive process as well. If the cut is not right, it will affect the outcome of the garment. So we have to make sure that our patterns and also our shapes are to perfection. These sustainable pieces have to be every bit as desirable as Laguma's other collections. This is the part of the process where we assembled our clothes together. It took literally about two months for us to put together our sustainability collection. This is often a fun process because this is where you see the garment coming to life and very crucial process because every finish and every stitch has to be to perfection. And this is basically the final step of the process where we do quality checking and also finishing of the garment to make sure that there is no hanging threads or loose buttons or some form of defects within the garment. This process is actually one of the most important ones because from here it goes into the packaging that will later go into stores and if steps or processes were missed throughout the production process they will be picked up over here this is our make or break part of the process the brand goes through this because it's always put people and the planet before profit important as profit is the thought of having recycled line pretty much started from this process where we take our materials and recycle them. And some of the pieces that we actually got out of this process of recycling are your bucket hats, your shorts to shirts, dress, and various other garments that we will keep rolling out. It is a very important department of our production factory. I personally feel that sustainability will be a subject of each and every company that would need to focus on. As a country as South Africa that has challenges of energy, that has challenges of water supply, doing processes like these helps a lot to pair with some of those things, you know, because in production, we use a lot of water, energy, and various other resources that we could save if we form businesses that have sustainability as one of the key aspects of their business. World Earth Day seemed the perfect day to debut this trailblazing offering. We are in Kruger's Stop at the Nairo Sculpture Park showcasing our autumn winter collection. 
over and above, we are doing a fashion festival where we're showing how sustainable we are as brand Makosa. We unpack our production processes, our real raw material sourcing processes, and for the first time ever, we reveal it out to the public. To get the people into the spirit of slow fashion, Laduma and Ntombenfle Katwane use storytelling. We took our cue from the Makosa range, which is called the Sons and Daughters of Credo Mutua. So our hairstyling is based on, inspired by the tree of life, which Credo Mutua spoke of a, a lot. Hair is spiritual threads, so we are trying to bring Credo Mutua's idea about the tree of life through the spiritual threads. We are all about capturing that spirit and expressing it through the hair. The Makosa event is just amazing, stunning. I mean, you can see the energy, the vibes is good. <laughs> I feel very honored. It's a privilege to be in this right now. It shows my authenticity and it shows my personality also, so I love this outfit so much. I love it because it's very African and that is exactly who I am, an African goddess. The designer filled his collection with characters, just like his muse and storyteller, Credo Mutwa. I feel super excited. In fact, it, it even feels like it could be my last collection, local. Not to say that I'll never do a collection again here in South Africa, but our standard has grew over the years, and we always acknowledge the fact that we aim to raise the bar every year. Watching from afar, we have, and now it is time for us to go to the rest of the world and, and get to retell our story and reintroduce ourselves. Ever the trailblazer, only once Laduma had walked the runway with his cutters, pattern makers and seamstresses was the show complete. Now, the rest of the world gets to see it. Up next, lean girl Angelique Dauberman shares the change in thinking which transformed her struggles with weight. Sponsored by Capitec. For fitness and health educator Angelique Dauberman, the novel approach to finding her ideal weight came from a personal breakthrough. Leaving behind the fixation on cutting down her intake, she focused on nutrition and fitness, transformed her body and turned her experience into helping others. My name is Angie, AKA The Lean Girl, founder of The Lean Girl health and fitness brand, empowering women to quit dieting, eat more delicious food, and live their best lives in the process. And I'm here today starting my Monday with a Pilates-esque class which is very similar, but it's called Liguri. I've started incorporating Liguri into my training program. I am a massive advocate for weight training, specifically for women that are so scared of it, but it honestly is the best form of training to build lean muscle, lose fat, and feel unbelievably strong. Fiona Boffard sees the results from combining the intensity of bodybuilding techniques with a low impact approach. You on your elbows please and we're gonna slide our bodies back into our first plank right so we're gonna zip your abs in tight pull the lats down and give me upper body here there we go zip in more zip 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 give me more give me more belly button to spine perfect and then slowly up now remember our movements are slow and controlled the slower you go the better it is for us so this is a Legree workout and it focuses on working your small small muscles to activate them and we want your body to shake and then that's how we know that you're doing the workout properly Working the small muscles and focusing on the center core is better for any workout that you do. It makes you stronger from the inside so that it improves your running, it improves your golfing, it improves your tennis, whatever else you want to do. So including Legree or a Pilates base equipment into your workout is very good for you because it gives you the boost from anything to go forward. Getting a toned physique and then keeping it seemed a bridge too far when Angelique was growing up. My passion for health and fitness started on my own journey, being pretty overweight as a child and then going into my teens where I pretty much serial dieted for a good decade. 
And it was through my own personal struggles, my own personal exploration of different diets, how the body actually works. Your body is essentially a biological machine. And once we understand how it truly works and the science of how it works, kind of all falls into place. And as I started learning about it and integrating the scientific principles into my own life and be like, oh my God, I've been struggling for so long and I wish that I knew this back in the day, it would have saved me a lot of pain, a lot of frustration. And I then thought, you know what, I need to share this with, with all the women. There are so many women out there struggling. So that's where it started. I love Legree as a fantastic addition to just about any workout program. And the reason being is that it makes you so focused and connected to your mind, to your body. And so often when we're working out, we can kind of just do movements mindlessly. And there is no way that you can be mindless when you are doing this workout. It makes you think about each individual muscle and activating it as you go, which is what we want when we're training. Anyone can try Legree, which is fantastic. So if you have never done any exercise, you can get started. They have different weights, so you can adjust the machines and as you get stronger, you can progress. It's had a huge impact on the 10,000 women who've taken Angie's lifestyle overhaul program. But she's just as into the fun side of exercise. And that's kayaking guide, Jesse Lowe's game. Uh, we'll be pedaling for about 2.53 kilometers in total, about 1.5 kilometers in that direction and back, and 1.5 in the opposite direction and back, okay? You don't have to be an experienced kayaker to, to kayak on the canal. First of all, there's no swells or any elements, serious elements that's in our way. It's not a difficult pedal. It's a nice, easy pedal through the canal. We provide life jackets and a, and a safety briefing to ensure your safety. This is a unique activity because not only do you go on the canal as just as a rental, but we also provide you with a guided tour around the scenes of the canal. After years in Joburg, the lean girl is making the most of her move to a city by the sea. We are here at Cape Kayak Adventures. I pulled along a couple of my girlfriends to do something that's fun outdoorsy, a bit of a workout, and also a bit out of our comfort zone. One of my philosophies is actually, I love hard things, and I've never done kayaking. I feel like it's gonna be a bit of a challenge, and so I'm excited. I'm really looking forward to trying something new, seeing if I can kayak without falling into the water. And it's a beautiful day in Cape Town, so also just getting some sun and some fun on a Monday. The functional fitness which Angelique has invested in paid handsome dividends when it comes to any kind of sport. I think kayaking could be a really good workout. I definitely will be back. I think that you're using your full body, using your upper body, using your core to stay engaged, definitely the legs as well, and you're getting outdoors, getting some happy endorphins, some sunshine. This is a pretty good workout. What I love about hanging out with Angie, she's always super positive. I sometimes feel if I'm feeling like I need a little bit of an upbeat lift, she's a great girl to kind of go for a prom walk, have a little bit of a chat about what workouts we're doing, what food we're eating. So she's, she brings a little bit of a, an up game. And one of her base qualities is she is hilarious. <laughs> She's so funny and that just makes working with her amazing and I think that's why people resonate with her because she just sees the humour and she's an amazingly positive person. Um, there's always this can-do and oozes enthusiasm and positivity. One of my core beliefs is that every single woman has a purpose here on the planet, whether it's to nurture her family, whether it's to have an amazing career. And I feel like when you are fit, when you are healthy, when you are energized, you are unstoppable. Just as important is Angie's mission to bring her YouTube viewers simple, low calorie, high protein recipes to get them lean. making one of my famous Lean Girl recipes, which is my Lean Girl Pita pizzas. And my inspiration for this is because I am obsessed with pizza. And my philosophy is that you do not have to choose between foods that you love and foods that are good for you. So you can go as crazy as you like on the toppings, but today we are heading for a classic chicken, mushroom, and feta pizza. Starting off with our basil and tomato sauce, which we are gonna put on the bottom of the pizza. 
And then I'm gonna cook up our mushrooms and our onions, just brown them nicely. Don't forget to season, seasoning all the way. And then we also have some fresh items. So I've got some spinach leaves. I love to add a bit of green in and a bit of nutrients wherever I can. So some fresh tomato as well. And then I've got some cooked chicken breast, which I actually had left over. So any protein that you have, you can go with that. And then of course the beautiful cheese. So I actually have some goat cheese cheddar here, which is a really strong, delicious cheddar. So you don't need a lot. A lot of people, when they're thinking about cheese, they always go for the low fat versions, which are actually lacking in flavor. So I'd rather use a little bit of a strong mature cheese. The person she most loves cooking for is husband, mentalist and leadership coach Gilan Gork. We met at a friend of mine's corporate year-end party and Angie was uh, friends with the girl who worked at the company and I was introduced to Angie. Angie heard that I'm a mentalist and asked me to show her some stuff. So I started it's doing impressive. some mind reading, you know, stuff to, on her. We landed up talking the whole night on a, in a table in the corner. And the next day I got a phone call from Angie saying I had so much fun with you. You're such an interesting guy. We were friends for six months before we became official. Yes. She wanted to have her cake and eat it until I told her that wouldn't work and then I went overseas and when I came back we started dating and uh, that was about nine years ago. Angie is extremely, extremely rigid on serving her community to the extent that she turns down probably 97% to 99% of brands that come to her and say we'll pay you to use our products and promote it and, and so on. She turns them away because her mission is to help everyone in her community. So I think that her secret source is that she's so authentic. She only tells people what she truly believes. Because of that, she's got such unbelievable influence and she uses that influence to then be able to guide women in the right direction. The future for Lean Girl is certainly an exciting one. My mission is to reach as many South African women as possible and teach them how to build bodies they love to live in while eating delicious food and just growing our amazing supportive community of women so that women don't have to feel alone on the journey, that they, we can all inspire one another, we can all share with one another and just help one another to show up and live our best lean lives. With Gillan challenging Angelique to go beyond what even she believed she can achieve, the lean girl is going big. Just ahead, a cup of the finest Italian coffee each morning for helping the local rugby club win. Seems a fair exchange. Ram Stain's path to international rugby has been an unusual one, and he wouldn't trade it for the world. Born in Craddock in the Eastern Cape, today he's considered a hometown hero in Treviso, Italy, where he has not only represented club and country, but also fallen for a local beauty. Hey guys, welcome inside ASA to Treviso. Um, I'm Ram Stain, a professional rugby player from South Africa living in Italy. Yeah, I play for Benetton Rugby and uh, yeah, obviously lifestyle wise it is amazing. It's a lot different compared to South Africa and um, it took a while to adapt but you know, um, we are very adaptable and now it's all worth it. So today, Carl, one of my teammates will join us and we'll show you a little bit of the things we'll do. Obviously starting in the gym and that way we are well activated and ready for our field sessions. Yes, Carl, um, South African, another South African. I can run ball. Two more for it, eh? Okay, yeah. Easy, mate, right, Jim. Hello, everyone. I'm Carl Wegner. I'm from Bloemfontein and uh, currently playing in Benetton in Treviso. And yeah, that's me. Yeah, so we'll do about a 20 minute bike session just to get activated after last night's game as well, just to get the muscles moving. And then we'll get straight into to moving some weight around. So usually this is Brahms max weight. Um, I usually do about 10, 12 reps on this weight. And then I just help Brahm afterwards to lift it. Yeah, Carl. <laughs> Always cracking on the jokes, eh? 
playing with Brahm is unbelievable. Uh, I mean, what a character he is. The professionalism he brings into the, into the club and uh, to the boys, it's unbelievable. But in the same time, always up for a joke, always up to have a laugh with the boys. And I mean, that's what rugby is all about, having a laugh with the boys. So yeah, just doing some pull-ups, obviously adding some weight. No, um, no, you're adding it to look ready for town. <laughs> 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 For me, I think the feeling just to have an South African in Italy brings home a bit closer to you. For the simple reason, if you want to speak Afrikaans, there's always someone around. If you come to work, there's always someone you can speak to without everyone else understanding what you're saying. And sometimes that just brings a bit of uh, humor training, knowing you can speak between yourselves and no one understands. So that brings a bit of humor. And also just have the traditional bra at home. And that, that makes you feel like you're back at home again. Since last year, when SA teams joined British and European clubs to compete in the URC, the guys have been playing some old friends. Uh, yeah, playing South African boys. I think uh, us as South Africans, we're a lot colder. We, we're less emotional and warm-hearted like the Latins, the Italians are. So for me, it's another game. But it's always nice to, to play against boys maybe that I grew up with, older players that um, played above me when I was a youngster in South Africa. So it's, it's really nice to actually just catch up and, um, and have a crack on the field against each other. But for me, it's just another game at the end of the day. If you change your, your attitude or your approach towards it, then it might also maybe a negative impact on your performance. As old as the Roman Empire, Treviso is home to the most famous Prosecco wine, tiramisu dessert, and some famous Italian sports brands. So we're bringing you guys here to the city centre to a mate of mine that has a coffee bar here, speciality coffee, and they've even got their own roastery. And for us, it's just a good um, get away from rugby, you know, after training sessions or on a day off. So, yeah. Because, you know, we, we need to start our day with a coffee in the morning as South Africans. <laughs> Otherwise, the day's not the same. Yeah, so I've been in Italy from December 2012. So just over 10 years now. Yeah, in the beginning it was quite difficult, especially not understanding anything and having to learn Italian. Um, that was quite tough. But yeah, slowly but surely I adapted quite easily and, and then it became easy and I, I really fell in love with it. So sitting here on a bridge above the water, enjoying a good coffee with Mike, no one can take that away from you. And, and that's one of the small things I enjoy about Italy is just this chilled lifestyle, laid back. I feel that I've become Italian. Great spot to be around. I think a lovely atmosphere sitting outside in the nature. Weather's awesome today. Nice coffee you get from lovely people. And yeah, for me overall, great choice by Brown to bring us here today and uh, taste some coffee. So our coffee is really special and unique because we buy the green beans and then we roast the coffee in our roastery and then we serve here in our coffee shop. So Bram is a good friend, he's a good rugby player and he's a really nice person. And we watch his game really often. Yeah, so I love Italy and one of the things I love about it is this culture, you know, um, coming into town, having a walk, getting a coffee, everyone's friendly, good food, great wine and great people, you know, they're warm people and they make you feel welcome. Bram has stolen the country's heart with his performances on the field, so local guys can't feel too hard done by that he's won the affections of surely one of Treviso's greatest beauties. Hi guys, so I present my girlfriend Lucrezia Naldi and yeah, she's Italian. Ciao guys, Bram is a really nice guy, he's really loving and um, he always tried to protect me and I think he's doing that really good. I feel really loved. We try to grow together, you know, to approach our challenges together, to, uh, to share it with each other, our difficulties and, and yeah, try to get to get over our limits together. I think that's one of our strengths that um, really helped the relationship and kind of separates the cultural difficulties, which is obviously there because we come from different backgrounds. Uh, so when we have some free time from our jobs, uh, we like to take a uh, Azo to the park and we like to cook together. And if we have weekends off, we, we usually like to travel. 
We also love having friends over and sharing time with them, um, sharing our passions, our, uh, the things we enjoy to do with them. So like today, we'll have a few friends over for lunch and um, prepare a carbonara, which is a um, very typical Italian pasta that originates from Rome. So Bram is going to cut everything because he's better cutting than me and we are gonna first put in the pan the guanciale uh, in sliced then we're gonna separate the egg white from the yolk and uh, beat the yolk with the cheese and to create a nice creamy sauce almost and then cook the pasta and mix everything together as your pasta cooking skills improved since you met me? Um, Gotta yeah. be honest. Huh? <laughs> yeah, definitely it's improved. Um, I'm still learning a lot. It's not that easy because I grow up with it and I learn it from their nonas and then their mothers. So yeah, they're really great. I'm just learning, observing and trying to, to improve slowly by, but surely. So Bram sometimes cooks with me when we invite over my family as well. And my mom loves the brau... Brau bruiki. Brau, brau bruiki, sorry. <laughs> but he's really good at cooking the meat and chicken and I love it. So Bram is a very kind guy. I really like the fact that uh, he's very humble, uh, even he's a famous rugby player. And yeah, he's like a, a friend of mine, so I really like to hang out with him. Bram is very sweet to Lucrezia. He always spoils her and is very uh, protective to her, so I feel like he's the best boyfriend she could ever ask for. <laughs> I think always missing South Africa, but I think tonight was unbelievable with friends, just being around people that you care about, that brings out um, some heart, love in you, and I think that was unbelievable just to be around them tonight and just not think about being back home in South Africa, but I think it'll always be there to be back in South Africa and think about your family and friends back there. I think it's part of the Italian culture to cook for people and friends and families. So yeah, we are a really tight group of friends. So it's really nice to share moments with them and being happy together. I think Bram is doing this really good, being part of the Italian culture while keeping his South African sides. Currently, I think we'd like to settle here, especially after my rugby career. Maybe travel a little bit, do some experience in other countries, and then come back here and, and start a life. But hey, you never know. We have to keep all doors open and we'll see what the future holds. Yeah, I'm really open-minded, so I think it would be nice to go and live in South Africa as well as staying here, so we will see. Well, thanks guys um, for joining us here in Italy. It's really been a pleasure to share a little bit of our lives with you and I hope to see you guys soon. Here's to Bram and Lucretia's Breibreiki and Carbonara franchise, or whichever wonderfully novel way they make a life together after rugby. Next up, Instagram's Ruben Lamprechts invites us home to meet the world-famous members of his animal family tree. Sponsored by Capitec. If it seems novel for a cattle farmer to have just shy of a quarter of a million followers on Instagram, it's because Ruben Lamprechts has more than one string to his bow. An animal lover who runs a wildlife refuge from the family farm, he is also using his Instagram following to attract tourism to Namibia. Hi guys, I'm Ruben Lamprechts and I'm a part-time farmer travel operator and content creator. Excuse Zoe for the noise, but we still like her. She talks a lot and welcome. So I was born in Namibia, raised here on the farm all my life. I just love the farm. I can't see myself anywhere else in the world. So I really love what I'm doing. Zoe is now one, one and a half years old. She's very noisy, always talkative. And she really thinks she's the boss. Small heart, but a big personality. So we are cattle farmers and wildlife farmers as well. And yes, we operate as a touring 
destination for many travelers to come experience our lifestyle on the farm with all the orphaned animals. And yes, it's quite a unique setting we have here. So Kale is a year and a half. His tusk was removed by the previous owners. So unfortunately, he cannot defend himself in nature. Um, so therefore, he stays with us. Um, he's in very good shape, as you can see. He loves dog pellets, also apples he loves. And yes, that's why I have such a good condition, as you can see. On the Instagram page, Ruben Namibia, you can meet all members of the extended animal family tree, a tradition begun by Mrs. Barista Lamprecht. I always used to love animals, and I saw from an early age that Ruben loved animals as well. He always used to take care of them, and he wanted to hold them. So it was since an early age that I saw he was really loving animals a lot. Like example, Ruben would love the little war dogs that we had. He would pet them, he would care of them, take care of them, feed them all the time. I would find them in his bed. I would find all the wild animals in his bed, actually. He just loved to take care of them and he paid a lot of attention to them all his years. Whenever we have stress, uh, you just come give them attention and it's like stress relieving for yourself. So you don't need a psychologist. Okay, so we're here with my biggest sister, Cindy. She's now 28 years old. And 28 years ago, we found her at the neighbor's farm who contacted us. Mm. Uh, they found her as a two-week-old baby. And ever since, she's part of the family and we love her dearly. She's really like a big sister to us. And yeah, she's the mother of all the animals here. She was very naughty. There was times when we just couldn't keep up with her. She would swing on the palmets jump everywhere on the furniture, she would steal food. I wouldn't say anybody should get a baboon as a pet, they are really naughty. But you can't help to love Sydney. she was just from the beginning part of the family. Yeah, she loves watching TV with us, drinking coffee with us, because in nature they stay in groups, so she thinks we are a troop. So yeah, we have a very good relationship. <laughs> The low cattle fences they have on the farm allow for the movement of wildlife across the property. As for Ruben's herd, they are as much a part of the family as his wild orphans. So we are here with my cattle I invested in four years ago. And this is Snowy. She's the only one that have a name. She's Instagram famous as well. She's a, a real blogger, everybody loves her. And she just gave birth to her first calf also this year. Some people will think I only use them for my Instagram publicity, but to me it's much more than that. I really want to look after them and give them the best lives. And I feel they really appreciate it, they can sense that. So with time I've built so much relationship with them that may, they fully trust me now. And I'm able to spend time with them. They probably think I'm their father figure, as I make a lot of decisions on their behalf, where is the best grazing for them, and also giving them some nutritious supplements, and therefore they love me dearly. I would really encourage young people to consider a career of farming, whether it's in livestock or crops, it doesn't matter. It's, I feel it's really important for the time in this world where we are, where it's difficult to find jobs. It's really important for our future to be able to have a source of food and income. So I would really encourage young people. Such sincerity is what keeps Ruben's audience growing. That and the four-legged social media stars he's introduced to the world. So this is Johnny, Johnny Walker. It's his nickname. So we found him in 2019. It was a terrible drought. So his mother had no choice to abandon him because she didn't have milk. So he grew up with the dogs, but he eventually got a little bit playful with thorns and it was a bit too dangerous to keep him very close to the house. So we relocated him a bit further away from the farm, but he's been very happy ever since. This is Hannah. She's about three and a half months old and she has been attacked by a leopard around about two weeks old. So now it's been three months we've been struggling in and out of the vet and it's mostly because of the bacteria. The leopard's teeth is so full of bacteria. So it's been a struggle ever since. There were stages when it seemed like she was healed, uh, but now we're back to square one. The pus is coming back again after last week's incision. So yeah. 
she's been lucky. Normally they do not survive a leopard attack. Yeah, but I suspect there was a, a young leopard because he couldn't take her down or the mother helped Hannah. So far we've lost about five calves now. So she was lucky, so hopefully she makes it. But for now, we'll still have to see what we can do for her. So it's quite expensive to maintain a farm because there's stuff like fences, like the water pipes that keeps on bursting every now and then. And then there's the pumps in the lakes where we pump the water out for all the different camps, which needs water for the wildlife and the cattle. So it's all that different type of stuff that need maintenance. If that is not up to standard, the cattle can go to the neighbors, it can get lost. Or the worst case scenario, it could end up where they don't have water to drink and they might die. So it's a daily thing to maintain all of that, check it up. So it's not only time consuming, but it also costs a lot. So not the most easy job in the world, but it's definitely rewarding. A third generation farmer, this young Namibian is conscious that he is also a custodian of the legacy left by the country's original conservationists. One day I was actually looking at the cattle here, they were here, and I was amazed by this rock formation. And something just told me to come look at it. And that's why I found this Bushman rock art, which was painted with blood and mud. So here's the first painting I ever found. If you look closely, you can see, it seems like a man throwing a rock. There you can see the rock and his arm bent like this. So they painted this with blood mixed with mud. And that's why it's still sticking here the difference between this one and the other one is that this one is engraved with a rock and the other one is painted. It looks like an elephant, the tail, the two legs. Then you can see the head here, the tusk and the, the trunk. And it seems like there was other paintings here as well, engravings, but you cannot say for sure what it was. And I believe it was like a teaching school for the children to show what animals was there way back when. So it's really special. So it seems like the Bushmen, they used to move to the east in the rainy season when this area where we showed you, a lot of rivers, the rock formations, it created puddles where the water lasted for a few months. And as it dried up, they moved to the bigger rivers. So all the small tributaries ran into a big river called the Kuisip where water lasted longer. So they moved there in the west late in the year. And as it rains again, they would come up east again. And that's why we have these paintings here. And yeah, it was quite a difficult life back then. It was the grandfather to Reuben and his brother Tertius who built the farm dams. Their parents, Melun and Barista Lamprechts, grew the business and their sons are now diversifying. So family to me is very important. My parents always taught us that family is very important and we grew up like that, very close. So we have a very good relationship. Ruben was more the, when he grew up, he was more the kind of uh, responsible one. Uh, he would make sure we, we get to town and to, in the hostel and make sure we have all our stuff and all that. So yeah, he was more the responsible one. My wife and I were blessed with twin boys and they love sport a lot at school. But even on weekends when there was sport, they would love to come back to the farm and be with the animals around the farm. So our parents, they really teach us uh, good values, to be honest in all the work we do, yeah, just to respect everyone and the people we interact with. And yeah, we are just really appreciative about the farm we have and all the business and yeah. So I do know maybe I started a year ago, it's a travel company. So at the moment I'm alone in the business where we book clients or tourists into lodges, help them with the payments, bookings, and then if they need a guide, we also organize that for them or I do it myself. And yes, basically we help them with exploring Namibia and the beauty it has to offer. In future, I see Ruben that his company will grow. He's working very hard now, so he's doing everything by himself. I think his company will grow. We will have people to employ and just expand. I think you have a bright future. So I would like to be remembered as the guy that always saved animals, but still let them roam free. 
and preserving the natural beauty which they live in. I feel that's very important for our future generations, my children, if I have one day, for them to be able to experience what I'm experiencing. It is novel for one young man to take on the future of his country's wildlife, farming and tourism. But Ruben Lumprecht is not your average young man. Coming up, for all our digital connectivity in South Africa, making personal connections still requires a set of wheels. out of bundle fees. We simplified banking. Now we're simplifying how we connect. Capitech Connect. Now everyone can get data and minutes at flat rates with no expiry. Keeping our economy moving demands innovation and delivering products which South Africans can rarely use, like Capitec's offer of unsecured credit to finance the purchase of a car. Head of vehicle finance Paul Detoy has even more good news. Capitec and Weavile Cars has been in partnership for a while now, primarily with the online presence. We're very proud to announce that we are opening Capitec's in Weavile Cars branches. We've of course got a very wide selection of vehicles across the entire South Africa, which helps from an accessibility perspective, especially considering that Capitec is serving more than 20 million clients. To deliver on what these clients need, value creation executive at We Buy Cars, Willem Klopper, has put the system through its paces. Benefits for our customers is that customers can now come and speak to Capitec representatives in the We Buy Cars branches who can guide and assist them through the Capitec application process and answer all the questions when it comes to normal loan application. Secondly, there'll be a digital integration between We Buy Cars and Capitec. So customers browsing the We Buy Cars online platforms can kick off the loan application process with Capitec on the We Buy Cars platform and have a simpler, easier process when they want to acquire a vehicle from EY Cars. The biggest difference between a Capitec vehicle loan and a normal unsecured loan is an extended loan term of up to 72 months to repay the loan, as well as a lower interest rate where we assess the client and not necessarily the vehicle. A good quality client can qualify for an interest rate as low as prime, which is quite significant considering that it's unsecured. Anybody can qualify for our Capitec Bank loan. It's not restricted to Capitec Bank clients. As long as you are permanently employed, have a valid South African ID and over the age of 18. Young entrepreneurs like fashion content creator and influencer Justine Peterson achieve so much online. But until your phone can teleport you, you still need a car. I'm doing so many things on a day-to-day -day basis, from going to shoots, attending to casting calls, or going to meetings with suppliers for my clothing business. Having a car will really be indispensable to my creative and professional life. I'm looking for a car that is reliable and comfortable, as well as some storage capacity. I don't want a massive car. A hatchback will be ideal, and something that will just get me from A to B. Since it's not restricted to Capitec clients, anybody can qualify for this loan. And because it is unsecured, it removes many of the traditional roadblocks to accessible vehicle financing. In this line of vehicles, a very nice, cool car. If you're looking at the other vehicles in its spec, it's actually the strongest one, I would say, as you can feel the drive on the road. Fuel consumption is also excellent on this vehicle. So all around, great vehicle, definitely worth a buy. This test drive is so awesome. I can feel that the car is driving smoothly, that the seats are comfortable. I can also hear that the radio is quite loud and good dynamics to it. I absolutely love it. Justine was impressed that the Capitec vehicle loan is available up to 250,000 Rand. And there are no restrictions on the odometer reading or age of the vehicle. What's great about this vehicle is that it came just under 100,000 Rand 
as well as it fit into Capitex vehicle finance offering, which is absolutely perfect because it made the process so much easier. Thank you so much, Kiran. And that is it, guys. In less than an hour, I'm a proud owner of my dream car. Let's go surprise my sister. As Justine and her twin sister Jody Peterson are in the business together, the new wheels will make double the difference. So it was a no-brainer. Who would hear the good news first? What? Whose car is this? Girl, look at my new work. Oh, wow. I bought it today, babe. Get inside. Let's, Let's take a go. Spin. Wow, she's gorgeous. Girl, this is so beautiful. I know. I absolutely Congrats. love it. Congrats. Thank you, babe. My dream car. I love it. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> The siblings are self-starters who create fashion, style, shoot, edit, and are never short of ideas for new content. This is my sister Jody, and together we are called the Peterson Twins. We are here at Rollercade to celebrate me purchasing my new whip. <laughs> and yeah, Jody, what do you think? Very smooth. It was yeah. such a smooth drive. I think our relationship is definitely like any other sister relationship. We argue, we laugh together, we're best friends, and we tell each other most things. Most things. <laughs> so maybe not everything. <laughs> we also have a brand. As you can see, we're wearing our tracksuits that we've made. And when starting the brand, I basically taught Jody how to sew. So when we're in studio together, we do it on our own. we in our space, in our studio, and we love just sharing that together mm. and creating something that we put our heart and our soul into. Living better for me is having the ability to be more flexible and with my new vehicle, I'm able to do that. And I'm able to be more productive. And being more productive, I can make more money and do more things that I love doing. And so that is me being able to live better. If you need to get your show on the road, now you know the simplest, easiest way to do it. And vehicles aside, if your enterprising idea could do with a boost of its own, then start your Live Better journey today with a chance of winning a thousand rand cash prize courtesy of Capitech. Simply reply to the competition post on the insidersa.co.za social media platforms using hashtag LiveBetterWithCapitech. T's and C's apply and can be found on the Insider SA website. Join us again next week as we celebrate our dads. Tolas Mo and family go horse riding and share their love for these magnificent creatures. While six-year-old author Hallelujah Komalo couldn't have done it without a father who cheers her every step of the way. Another feel-good production.